I have been talking about triaxial testing and in the previous lecture I introduced the concept of uh, core pressure parameters and a bit of the stress paths. So, these two things I will be covering in details in uh, another two lectures, particularly in today's lecture I will be talking about the core pressure parameters, how to determine them by doing triaxial testing and how to interpret the results that is more important. Now, this subject is of practical importance and uh, most of you must be dealing it with it uh, either in academics or in the consulting field. So, what I will try to do is I will try to balance both the sides and give you an optimum way which you can follow uh, for understanding these concepts in a better manner. So, yesterday we introduced this concept of uh, a parameter and B parameter and A B parameter which we have defined as A prime parameter. Now, normally we talk about two types of loading which are the genesis of this type of uh, pore pressure parameters. <coughs> the first one is what we call it as a isotropic loading and the second one is axial loading. I hope you can understand isotropic loading is the case where the sigma 3 is normally changed typically the consolidation state of the material because sigma 3 corresponds to the confinement and if you remember the Skempton's equation this is how we defined it that delta u equal to delta u 1 plus delta u 2 where delta u 1 is during the consolidation. And this is because of the change in the deviator stress. Many times uh, change in deviator stress can also be written as delta of sigma 1 minus sigma 3. But in most of the circumstances you will come across later on you will realize that mathematically delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 might not be corresponding to delta of sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is the DS term deviatory stress term and sometimes people mistake this as like this depends upon the initial conditions from which we are doing the testing. So, it is always better to follow the incremental change in the deviator stress as delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. So, this sigma 3 is responsible for giving delta u 1 isotropic condition all right. Isotropic condition means if I consider an element of soil and if I load it from all round directions sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 suppose if it is general case. So, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 are going to be same equal to sigma 3 which is going to cause increase in power of pressure. So, to be precise what we should be writing is change in delta sigma 3 is causing delta u 1. The ratio of the two we have defined as B parameter this is equal to delta u 1 upon delta sigma 3. So, a bit change in confining stress gets resulted into change in the power of pressure under isotropic loading condition. Isotropic means all around in all the three directions. Now, if you go into the analysis of this function, you know what happens is uh, B is normally defined as I am skipping, skipping out the derivation of all these things because this is at UG level is not required, but you have to understand the parameters which are involved in constitution of B parameter as such. So, B is normally defined as 1 plus porosity multiplied by 
cv upon cs okay and these parameters are utilized mainly for characterizing the soil mass all right porosity is the disturb <coughs> cv corresponds to the compressibility of the fluid under isotropic compression fine and cs corresponds to the compressibility of the soil skeleton so the mineral portion of the soil which is giving the solid phase is the compressibility of the uh, soil skeleton under isotropic compression I hope now you can realize that I can create a situation where all the pores are filled with water and in that case the compressibility of the pore fluid would be tending to 0 otherwise also because water is incompressible is this correct. So, if this is the situation what happens is B normally comes out to be unity or close to unity. So, yesterday we were debating upon this fact. Normally, the range of saturation is from 0.95 to 1. If this is the condition which is fulfilled, we say the soil sample is saturated. If not, apply the back pressure and saturate the soil sample so that you can use the concepts of Terzaghi's principles and so on. Is this part okay? Now, the A parameter is something different. Now, A parameter happens is comes in the picture when let us say I apply a incremental change in sigma 1 itself uniaxial clear. So, it is understood that this is uniaxial and this condition occurs when you are shearing the sample clear because sigma 3 is kept constant remember changing sigma 3 is not an easy task. Fine. Once you have consolidated the sample at sigma 3, you try to shear it by changing sigma d value or sigma 1 value. So, this is what is going to cause the shearing of the sample clear delta sigma 1 which is equal to sigma d. Now, because of this whatever pore pressure develops gets translated into delta u 2. So, that means delta u 2 is a function of this is due to the shearing, this will be equal to delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. This is the cause, this is the effect and the parameter which we get is A prime which is equal to A into B and this is defined as delta u 2 divided by delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. I repeat delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 should not be mistaken as delta of sigma 1 minus sigma 3 in most of the circumstances because now you can realize once we do not do that mistake I am free to change sigma 1 independently and I am free to change sigma 3 also independently clear unless the initial conditions are fixed and that is it. Now, it so happens that this a b para a b parameter or a prime parameter is truly speaking turns out to be b into 1 by 3 because what we are doing is this delta e u 2 which is getting generated is to be distributed in all the three directions this assumption all right. So, one third, one third, one third we apply everywhere and hence most of the time a parameter can be taken as theoretically one third, but if you are doing an experiment you should be measuring a parameter separately fine. Now, if this part is clear let us try to solve problem number uh, 6 delta u 1 at the consolidation stage delta u 2 at the shearing stage that is it nothing greater than this all right. 
and put together we have written this equation as B delta sigma 3 plus A B delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3 and this can be written as B delta sigma 3 plus A delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. So, those of you who are clever can utilize this equation the way you would like to. In simplest possible form, I can get rid of B if it is saturated soil sample, clear, S equal to 1 and then I can get the value of A parameter as total pore pressure minus delta sigma 3 upon this is uh, delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. Now, choice is yours the way you want to play with A parameter. So, in a conventional triaxial test what we do is we fix sigma 3 during consolidation clear. So, by all means delta sigma 3 is going to be 0. So, truly speaking A parameter is nothing but delta u upon delta sigma 1. Now, how I achieve delta sigma 1? We had a lot of discussion on this and I gave you a logic that the sample is confined in a rigid frame and you are lifting it up, clear? And the reaction is being recorded by the load cell or by the probing ring, whatever it is. So, that gives you delta sigma value directly, fine. So, let us do the problem number 6. A compacted soil was tested what comes to your mind compacted soil was tested what compaction does to the materials now see we are talking about the pore pressure parameters positive and negative clear. So, the moment we somebody gives us a hint that it is a compacted soil mass, what compaction does to the pore pressures? Go to the compaction curve, as your gamma d increases what happens? Suction starts building up. So, CE 323 concepts, two concepts now have been clubbed together, capillary action in soils and compaction process. So, the connotation is the more and more compacted material you create, the more and more suction you are creating into it, fine, alright, is this clear? So, this is the first connotation that compacted soil means I am dealing with suction probably. So, was tested in a triaxial setup. in an undrained condition at sigma 3 equal to 400 kilo Newton per meter square. Is this fine? Consolidation stage. Now, there is a rider on this. The rider on this is before the application of sigma 3, the pore pressure was 0. Have you understood this statement? Initial condition the pore pressure is given and which is 0. The following results were obtained. You have strain we have deviatory stress. We 
we have pore water pressure fine what type of pore water pressure this would be u1 or u2 that you have to differentiate you are straining the sample clear so u1 gets filtered out that part has been taken care of the shearing process is on so this is nothing but u2 what we want is delta u2 clear at zero strain zero deviator stress initial condition of pore water pressure is zero the moment you are straining it the pore water pressure shoots up to 250 it could be because of the disturbance caused to the sample and you are mounting it all right so you have just taken the sample you have balanced this to be the pore water pressure is zero and then the moment you started sharing the sample the pore water pressure is 250 now let us write this complete series of tests hopefully failure comes at this point I have missed out 7.5 here that is the problem all right the pore water pressures are 250 285 150 105 75 60 50 all right normally the convention is everything is taken with respect to zero strain so this becomes my initial value and this is the final value so when i have to compute delta u2 this will be final minus initial always clear no confusion about this from this point onwards you are sharing the material so this becomes your origin clear at this stage total consolidation has occurred this becomes my background pore water pressure which I am filtering out from further values to know what is delta u2 value. So for that matter 285 minus 250, 150 minus 250, 105 minus 250 and so on. Change in ds is simple starting from this point this minus this, this minus this and so on. So the way to understand this would be I think some of you were debating in the previous lectures and my logic remains same. When you are sharing this material, what is happening? Starting from 0, 0, I am crossing these intermediate states, states of the material and then somewhere here the failure would take place, alright. So each of these state corresponds to the intermediate state in terms of shear stress versus epsilon A relationship. So now this is fairly simple, uh, you get at 0, this is 35 minus 100 minus 145 minus 175 and so on. Having done this, I will like to compute delta sigma 1 minus delta sigma 3. Why we are doing this? Because I want to get the A parameter, clear? So the moment delta u2 is known this is your denominator term so this will be 570 950 and so on i can get from here a prime parameter a prime parameter is equal to a into b 
So I should be obtaining B parameter first. Can I obtain B parameter by any chance? This is a tricky thing, but you have to understand if your concepts are clear, you can obtain it easily. So read the problem statement carefully and see whether we can obtain B parameter or not. A compacted soil was tested in a track shell setup in an undrained condition at sigma 3 equal to 400. Before the application of sigma 3, the pore water pressure was 0. The incremental change in the pore water pressure happens to be 250. So that means I can obtain B as clear. What do you, how do you characterize the soil? This is the first characterization of the soil, clear, unsaturated sample and that is correct because you are working on compacted soils, so that is what our hunch was. So the way you started analyzing the problem is that you are dealing with the unsaturated soil sample which has been having suction in it by virtue of being a compacted material. So for a quick review, I know all of you have forgotten but please remember these things. Okay, so this is the OMC. Now, if I ask you to plot pore water pressure as a function of W, what is going to happen? So, the logic is simple the more and more you compact, the negative pore water pressures develop. Clear? If I plot is a suction at these OMC where all the pores are almost getting filled up, what will happen? Okay, this part you should remember. So rest is all simple. You have the P B parameter, you have the A prime parameter, compute the A parameter from A prime and then if OCR is given, what we did in the problem number 5, I can relate this A to OCR value. That was problem number 5. So this is one step ahead of the problem number 5. There we were knowing OCR, but we were not knowing how to compute these parameters. Clear? Interesting thing would be, if I plot the variation of A with re respect to strain, what I will be getting is? You remember we studied this. So, if this is the response NC, if this is the response OC, try to see in what category the material falls. So, this reiterates that most of the time the traction testing is done to characterize the soil mass. Fine. See, you should always remember zero strain is this situation. The moment you started sharing what somebody had asked the question sometime back how pore water pressures develop. I do not know who had asked this question, but that was a very good question and I think I gave you an answer that because of the change in the microstructure of the soil mass. So 0 to 2.5 of shearing induces so much of pore water pressure, 0 to 5.0 of shearing induces this much of pore water pressure. This is how the material is. This is the history of formation or whatever, you cannot control it. So we make this as a benchmark. Clear? So everything is happening with respect to this. Change in DS is with respect to this. Change in pore pressure is also with respect to this. And gain in axial strain is also with respect to this state. You will realize that this was inbuilt over here. So just just a minute. I got your point. So rather than giving this value over here, what I would have done is I have got given this value over here itself. So the moment you get the pore pressure because of this process and then I would have sheared it, does not matter. But then the concept of back pressures I am trying to explain to you. You will find uh, this relationship slightly inverted. So if you plot this relationship, what they do is they plot pore pressure like positive and negative, alright and this happens to be my OMC. So 
I hope now you can realize this is how the pore variation would be. So, when you come close to the saturation line or the maximum compaction state, your pore pressure tends to become positive or 0, all right. Now, those of you who might get a chance to work in the unsaturated soil mechanics will link this U versus W relationship with the K unsaturated with respect to moisture content. So, those of you who might get a chance to work on THMC and other things thermohydromechanical coupling of soils because of high temperatures, soil sample is becoming unsaturated, suctions are becoming negative, suctions are getting developed in the system, clear? The pore pressures are becoming negative because of loss of moisture and the material might be transforming from a NC2OC state desiccation. How would you characterize the soil based on the parameters? So, the thumb rules are like this B is equal to 1 for saturated soils. A value is 0.5 to 1.0 for NC materials. A if it is greater than 1, highly sensitive clays, if A is 0 to 0 0.5, these are OC materials. slightly. So, I would say these are the lower compressible, do not try to mug it up, this just for your understanding, nothing more than that. And if A happens to be negative, then this is a heavily over consolidated soils. So, I repeat most of the time triaxial testing is done to understand the condition of the soil, clear? You want to diagnose this. <laughs>